Welcome back everybody, RC here for Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for gear, tips, inspiration, anything you need to get your photography over to the next level. Now this week I wanted to kind of expand a little bit on the concept of tethered capture because, well, we have Lightroom CC that came out, we have a bunch of info and resources over at the Lightroom Killer Tips site, but people are, are you know, kind of in a position where they're saying, all right, well, you can tether, but then can you use your iPad to be able to do the same thing? This is how I would set it up and why I would set it up this way. I like the concept of tethered capture and it's pretty straightforward, right? You would go over here under the file menu and inside a file, you would go to tethered capture and under the tethered capture section, you want to add start tethered capture, right? Pretty straightforward. I'm going to call it test tether uh, PTNT, right? That's pretty much fine. This is the sample sequence. I'm going to start with sequence number one. I'm going to do it right into the desktop. What's new inside of Lightroom CC is this option here that's called add to collection, which I happen to like. Inside of there, I'm going to create a collection and I'm going to call it test PTNT tether. Now that I have that set there, you'll see that you have an option right here that says sync with Lightroom Mobile. That's the part, that's it. You have to do nothing else. You click on create, click OK, and now it's automatically picking up all of that information inside of that collection. So it's auto, it's, it'll grab the information, puts it into the folder. Before, when you were using earlier versions of Lightroom, it would just put it into the previously import or you could see it in the folder. Now you can see it inside of an actual collection and that collection could be synced. So your tethering is set up, right? I can turn this down, right? I can just bring the laptop down. You don't have to take a look at this, right? So just shut the laptop down or leave it up, you know, however you would want. And now I'm just gonna take some shots around the studio. Click, click, click. Just three shots, that's it. All of that information is being brought into Lightroom. And as soon as that information is set up there, it's automatically going out and it's syncing those photos with Lightroom Mobile. Now, I can take a tablet now, something like this, right? So this is my iPad. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go inside of here. I'm inside of my iPad. I'm gonna swing over to Lightroom. And you'll notice there's my test pt and tether. And all of that information now is going over into that area. So at any point in time, I can come over here. I can take a look at this and I can say, oh, you know what? This is the file that I'm working on. This looks pretty good. It has all of that information. Now, why is that important to me, right? A lot of the times if I'm trying to do a shoot, I'm looking here in my monitor for, you know, critical focus. Am I looking for something? But one of the things that I don't like is I don't like people kind of hovering around me while I'm doing that, right? You don't want people just sitting there going, oh, look at that. Oh, go back. Oh, take a look at this. Oh, work with that. Now, what you can do is you can set all of this stuff up. You give this to somebody and go, you know what? Go sit over there, <laughs> right? Go over away from where we're actually working and just take a look at the pictures. At any point in time, they can come over here and they can set themselves up and they go, all right, well, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this. You wanna zoom in, you wanna zoom out. It's all available to them right in this one spot and you can turn this even further into presentation mode where they can't make any changes for you. So not only do you get the best of benefits from doing it here on your computer, but you can put it right using Lightroom Mobile. So that part I think is pretty cool. Now, at any point in time, any changes that you make inside of here, right? You could always just come over here and make a develop change. So now at any point in time, I can go ahead and I can just increase my exposure here. And the benefit to that is that now, all of those changes are reflected right on the iPad somewhere else. Now, when we come back, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how to create a custom page layout in Lightroom for printing multiple images. Stick around, you're gonna to wanna to see this. So many people experience us in a digital way. So it's a huge decision as to where are people going to experience you online. For us, Smug Mug is a resource. It's just part of our daily process. I put a lot of passion and soul into my work, and it's got to translate. Smug Mug does a great job. Bottom line is it showcases in a professional way what we do as a studio. I chose Smug Mug because I think it's the best, tightest place to represent my artistic self to the world. Welcome back everybody, RC here for Photography Tips and Tricks. Now, I wanna show you something else while we're on the subject of Lightroom on the concept of printing. People were talking to me about, well, if I have an eight by 10 sheet of paper and I wanna print something that's smaller than an eight by 10, can I print more than one? Yes, you can, and you can do this inside of custom page setups. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna go over here to the print module and inside of the print module, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to page setup. 
Under page setup, I'm gonna set up the specific size of paper that I'm using, right, paper size right here, for the specific printer. So in this case, you have US letter, you have a sheet. That looks good. If you select single image contact sheet, that is only gonna print one image at a time. If you select multiple images inside of the list, you'll see that now it says page one of three. So it's gonna print three sheets of paper, no matter what the size of this is. So if you turn around and you make this really, really small, it's still not going to add more than one sheet to a page. So that's not necessarily a good thing but you do want the specific size here set up for you. So what I would do is I would Command D, deselect this, and instead of using single image, I would use custom package. Custom package lets you click in a series of cells based on a layout that you would have here. So you see add to package, four by six, you can click on the drop down. there's a bunch of different ones that you have there. So let's say for example, I need a four by six, I click on it, there it shows up, and I want, let's say, two and a half by three and a half, one, two. At any point in time, I can grab these and I can move these, right? It tries to be very economical about how it conserves the paper, but you can specify by dragging them wherever you want. Now that you have that set, all you have to do is literally click, drag into it, click, drag into it, automatically rotates, click, drag into it. Now you can take one sheet of paper and you can print three different types of pictures with different sizes in one spot. And I think that the good part about this is that now you're conserving a lot more of that paper where you would have just done one before and thrown everything else in the trash. Use it, try something different. I think it's very important for you. So something to consider. Now guys, this is something that we do here day in and day out. If you guys wanna see more of this, make sure that you go to kelby1.com. Kelby1 is the place where we do training 24 hours a day, seven days a week in photography, Photoshop, Lightroom, a bunch of different things. The other thing that you might want to take a look at is go take a look at our website over at Lightroom Killer Tips. This is a place where you can get a bunch of information on Lightroom on a daily basis. And we also have a show called The Lightroom Show. So if you like these kinds of podcasts, make sure you take a look at it there. Now, we have a PeachBit ebook deal here. That's gonna be 40% off of this ebook deal. Go to peachbit.com slash kelby1 Enter in the code Kelby1 and you are going to get the Photoshop workbook, an amazing book by our friend Glenn Dewis. Now the last thing that I want you to take a look at is this. This is gonna be our inspiration. I think that you, everybody should follow this person, Sharon Farmer. She was just recently here doing a Trailblazers interview series with Mia McCormick and she is an amazing lady, an amazing photographer. This was the first female director of photography for the White House and the first African-American at that. Some incredible stories. Make sure you go to Facebook and follow her. I've made this convenient for you. All you gotta do is bit.ly slash Sharon Farmer Facebook. You're gonna be very, very happy that you did. But that's pretty much it, guys, for this week. Make sure you guys come in next week for Photography Tips and Tricks. My name is RC, we'll see you soon.